Hey, good morning, everyone. We're so excited to have you on here with us today. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to Johnny Rea at Frank Dale Construction. Super excited to get to chat with you, Johnny. Um, he's going to be talking today about how to set yourself up for success when you are uh, in those stages of evaluating a new construction estimating software. So without further ado, Johnny, I'll go ahead and hand it to you. And if you would mind just telling us a little bit about yourself to kick us off. Uh, my name is Johnny Gray. I'm the Vice President of Pre-Construction for Frank Dale Construction, located in South Lake, Texas, a uh, suburb of the, the DFW Metroplex. Uh, we're a 25-year-old company with 25-ish uh, employees, probably do average $35, $40 million on on year on year on revenue. And um, definitely in the, uh, the frame of mind of small team and and the, uh, from a pre-construction standpoint you know, trying to maximize and get everything you got to get done with uh with what the resources and, and uh, opportunities you have available but i've been in the commercial construction industry for 14 yeah 14 years now and uh yeah enjoy it and glad to uh glad to meet you all Awesome, great to hear. Well, let's go ahead and dive into um, kind of the first thing I want to ask you about. Can you tell me, so you know, you, you've got a smaller team, um, like you said, you want to make the most of the resources that you have. What, what was the motivation behind wanting to find a new construction estimating software? What kind of spurred that on? Sure, so it kind of cobbled together a few different solutions. Um, to meet the needs from a takeoff standpoint to pricing and deliverables and, and so those kind of things. So um, Excel was kind of the backbone of that, which um, is is a solution almost by default, I guess, if you could say that's what we started with and it works. Um, and then enables enough flexibility and, and free form to, to be able to work and to to know because what we do seems repetitive but is unique every time in some aspects and so finding a way to keep the flexibility to to, to paint within the lines but pivot that to some kind of structure so that it is not so it's actually a viable way to be able to capture data to look at one project compare it to another to see trends to, to just pull and harvest so much info that we have that we're creating but was locked up so to speak in uh, in these spreadsheets that because they were just a little bit different enough it, would, it really made it next to impossible to be able to pull valuable information out of that so and then standardization and, and there's there's so many little ripple effects of that same theme that we were able to center on of that okay it's it's the same process, but they're all different. So trying to find something to unify all of that and then bring different pieces of, of, uh, of the workflow together. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are just at a point where you're ready to take it to the next level, right? You you had all the data, you had all this info coming in, but you wanted to leverage it. You wanted to be able to do more with it, which is yeah. amazing. Um, so with that being said, you know, you start this journey of looking for a new software. I think we all know here that moving to any kind of new platform, especially software, it's never easy. Um, so would you mind telling me like, what, what was the hardest part? What were some of the hardest parts of looking for new construction estimating software? Yeah, it's it's the the gift and and the, uh, the, the obstacle, I think, of just the explosion of technology in our industry over the last, I mean, you want to go really wild, like two decades, but I think even more concentrated than that, we've, we're have we at a new dawn, so to speak. I remember when I first came into the industry was when we were making the shift from paper to digital plans. And that was like totally reinventing the wheel, it felt like. And that's just been such a, a small part of this bell curve, I feel like, that the industry's been on. So long answer to say that there's a lot of options out there and there's a lot of ways that different companies with, with great um, resources and, and ideas and things come at it and so trying to 
stay on point to what the problem is we're actually trying to solve and, and not be distracted by the noise of these really cool features, you know, and a lot of things that, um, you know, would be really fun and really, okay, this thing would, would make this one thing easier, but did not address the overall um, purpose of, of, like you were asking before, of why we started looking for freaking software. So I think being able to be focused, being able to be, one, just first identifying that problem, right? Knowing what you need, and then being able to, to stay focused on that as you go to the marketplace and try to find those solutions. Now, you know, I, I really love that you said, um, kind of sifting through all the cool and nifty features to find the purpose. And I think, you know, I think we've all been there, whether, you know, it's construction estimating software, car phone, you know, there's so many bells and whistles, but it may not be tailored to what you actually need at that point in time. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, with that being said, what could you tell me like three things that you guys did to help prep for that evaluation to help winnow through the bells and whistles and the cool features to find the software that would actually align with y'all's vision and mission sure so i think that first step was really trying to do some some reflections or some evaluation assessment of how we did the process from pre-construction and what the different uh, iterations of that would look like if it's a different deliverable type different contracting type um, just kind of take a survey it's trying to step back a little bit from the uh, the trees there and see how does it work and identify that that problem what is it what is it what's the pain point what are we trying to fix what are we trying to accomplish with it and then you know take a look at the tools that we were using at the time and see okay here's here's this hit list if you will or here's the functions and this is the tool we're using to do it now and and try and find some of that overlap and, and that led us to also the idea of like trying to to consolidate into you know, or at least if not all the way under one program for for a workflow but at least have some reasonable way that you can move data from one one silo to the next so to speak so just kind of first look in what's the problem we're trying to find how are we doing it now which gave us kind of that um criteria you know the, the profile if you will of here's the must-haves in in the solution and then as we start surveying and looking at what's there and what's not then that that list may grow some but it was really trying to protect that, that initial assessment that we've done of saying why are, why are we even looking at this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was great. I, I really like that. Um, I think kind of along those same lines, you know, if, if you were talking to pre-con teams today, you know, they, they're coming to you like, hey, we're looking for this new software. What do we do? What, what would you tell them? I think you kind of touched on some of it with finding that problem, defining what you really want. But is there maybe anything else um, that you found valuable that kind of gets overlooked in that type of advice? So I think um, when I think about the the journey that it, it was to, to kind of do this and where to go, um, probably the one thing that I would would say that I, I was probably too optimistic about the the time and and the effort it's going to take to make the pivot from one platform to the next to go through implementation. I think it it seems very straightforward because I've been I've been using my tools every day and I'm comfortable with it and I know how to do it and I'm super proficient at that. And I even consider myself a tech native and um, but whenever you you add in the mix of not just using a tool, but whenever it's you know a live play if you want to call it that, you know what what we do in pre-construction can set profitability for the rest of the company and knowing that you got it right and that everything is is functional whenever you put a an estimate or a tender together and, and make those deliverables it's it's got to be right and so just the nuances and and what it's like to be uncomfortable for a little bit if you've not done that before so i think just knowing that that process give, giving it as much um, importance as you can with 
the tool and, and so to speak, so that you have a game plan to implement. I think it, it ensures that you're not just making um, a, a, a lame duck type of investment in a, in a program that doesn't get off the ground that you don't see ROIs from, but also that you've got the, the right uh, space created for that. And um, the other side of that coin, I think too, that I had to kind of look at in, in the midst of that journey is that there's never gonna be a perfect time. And so it's it's like, there's also never going to be the perfect database, the perfect tool or any of these kind of things. And it's that's like the war, I think, for estimators of like, we want everything to be perfect and it is not ever gonna be perfect. And so, you know, when you finally find that place, but to just know that, okay, we've done the research. Here's the reason why we're making this decision. This is why this tool is gonna work. And you no, know, it's gonna be a pain. It's gonna be difficult. There's gonna be uncomfort in it, but to, to jump in it and, and just get, get that process rolling and that at least for me i never found that absolute this would have been the perfect window to be able to do these things because our business is fluid yeah absolutely you know i i really really love that you talk about um the that the time and effort prepare for the time and effort that it's going to take and also that it's never going to be completely perfect like you said um with those two things being said you know you guys are are kind of on the other side now you did choose Trust and estimating software, you chose Destiny Estimator. Would you say that the time, the effort, you know, the growing pains, was it was it worth it? And can you, okay, awesome. Love the enthusiastic head nod. Um, was it worth it? And also, would you mind diving a little bit into what were the benefits that you saw once you did get over the hurdle? Yeah, so um, it really kind of ties the, the conversation that we've had all together and, and I've I've been really pleased that um, we were able to find a tool that met that criteria that we were looking for of being able to to provide structure that gives us the benefits of that, but not provide a straitjacket that keeps us from being able to be fluid and move with the differences of the job. And that, that is one of the unique things about Estimator that it finds this right balance of being able to to give you enough latitude, but yet keep you within some some guardrails so that you don't just become this free-flowing one-off you know it's it's pretty interesting um and uh, looked for a long time to find that so um definitely was worth it and and glad that what what i expect what i thought in, in taking the time to do evaluations to to do demonstrations and so forth that that came to fruition on the other side of that implementation and being able to pivot how we're doing and and it's it's check those boxes of being able to do what we do faster with efficiency and it not just be um, cutting corners so to speak it's like there's trying to to not have to reinvent um each one but still stay customized is uh, yeah was a big deal and that's that that paid off and those those other key criteria that we used in, in making our decision, we, we were able to realize. So yeah, oh, definitely. definitely cool. Incredible, man, that's that's awesome to hear. Well, Johnny, thank you so, so much for coming on here today and having this conversation with me. Um, before we sign off, anything else that you'd like to share with the audience before we head out? I'm just, uh, yeah, glad glad to be part of a great industry and, and uh, in, encouraged by folks that are, are looking to to grow and to learn and to evolve. And I uh, just want to, to say, keep going in that. And uh, I know I'm, I'm definitely that that type and uh, uh, it can be so easy to get caught in the grind of just the day and trying to get to that next deadline and next next place. But um, however you can, where you can, kind of peek up to the horizon there and know that um, we're, we get to do some really cool stuff and uh, we're an important part of, of our society. and. Uh, honored to be with with all of our guests awesome hey well uh before everyone goes i do want to remind you all um there will be a recording of this webinar sent out uh if you weren't able to attend the live broadcast anyone that registered will be getting this also please keep an eye out on your inbox um we have got another webinar coming up with ronnie gronbach director of precon at willis smith he's gonna be talking about how to save time uh in estimating so be sure that you don't miss out on that Thank you all for being here with us today. Thank you again, Johnny, and we will see you guys again.